This is the Parker Lord 3DM GQ7 GNSS INS. It is a high performance inertial navigation system that features RTK positioning support, dual antenna heading, and an advanced, tightly coupled extended common filter for sensor fusion. It has two micro D9 connectors, a main port for primary communications, and an auxiliary port for RTK corrections. On the sides, there are dual MMCX connectors for GNSS antennas. In this video, we're going to go over the initial setup and configuration for the 3DM GQ7. Included in the connectivity kit, there are two multi-frequency GNSS antennas, two MMCX to SMA adapters, and one micro D9 to USB cable. First step is to connect the MMCX adapters to the GNSS antennas. Next step is to connect the GNSS antennas to the MMCX connectors on either side of the GQ7. Finally, connect the USB cable to the main port. From here, we're ready to move on to using Sensor Connect to configure the GQ7. The first step in GQ7 setup and configuration is to download Sensor Connect. So we're going to go to microstrain.com slash software slash sensor connect and use this download link right here. I already have it set up and installed, so I'm just going to open sensor connect, which takes you to the home screen right here. Now that we've downloaded and installed sensor connect, we can start setup and configuration for the 3DM GQ7. You can see here on the left hand side of the screen, we have the devices column. If you're using USB, you can just plug in the device and it will auto-detect. If you're using serial, you need to use the Add Device button down here at the bottom. We're using USB, so we just plugged it in and the device has been auto-detected. So we'll select our device and that will take us to the home screen with all the available configuration tiles for the GQ7. The first step for configuration is to set up the filter initialization and aiding measurements. So we're going to go to this Configure tile on the home screen which brings us to the configuration screen for the GQ7. We're first going to set up the initialization method for the EKF. Uh, the EKF in the GQ7 runs in four specific filter modes, uh, initialization, vertical gyro, AHARS mode, and full navigation. In vertical gyro mode, the filter is just estimating pitch and roll. In AHARS mode, it's estimating pitch, roll, and yaw. And in full navigation mode, it's estimating pitch, roll, yaw, position, and velocity. There are several methods available to initialize the filter, either using a manual initialization method or an auto initialization method. Uh, for this example, we're just going to be using auto initialization. Uh, we're going to leave pitch and roll to auto initialize from the accelerometers. Uh, we're going to leave position to auto initialize from the GNSS receivers. Uh, the one thing we need to select is the heading alignment method. Uh, in this example, we're going to be using dual antenna alignment, but there's also an option for kinematic alignment, which uses your velocity vector, or magnetometer alignment. Next, we need to configure the filter aiding measurements we're going to use. So we're going to scroll down to the aiding source enable section. Position and velocity aiding uh, is enabled by default, so we're going to leave that on. We also need to enable GPS heading aiding. Uh, We've already turned this on in the initial, for the initialization method, but if we want the measurement to be used while the filter is running, we also need to enable it as an aiding source. The next step is to configure the antenna offsets. So we're going to scroll down to the mounting section here. Uh, these offsets need to be measured within 5 centimeters or better. Uh, the extended common filter has the ability to track error in the antenna offsets, but the better your initial estimate is, uh, the faster the filter will converge, and the better performance you can expect. So we're just going to put in some demo offsets here uh, so we can allow the heading to initialize. Uh, and then we're going to hit Apply Configuration to send the configuration to the device. And then we're going to go back to the main screen. Next, we're going to go to the filter initialization screen. Since the filter has been set up to auto initialize, this step isn't necessary, but it does do a good job of illustrating uh, filter in the filter initialization process and function. So we're going to come in here. We can see the, the current status of the filter. Uh, currently it's in full navigation mode, but we're going to go through the whole initialization process. So we're going to reset the filter from here. Um, start the initialization, uh, initialize pitch and roll using the accelerometers, and now we're in vertical gyro mode. 
Uh, in vertical gyro mode, uh, we're currently waiting for a heading measurement from the dual antenna system, um, which is going to take a couple of seconds. <clears throat> from there, uh, we already have a position measurement, as you can see down here, uh, from the GPS receiver, so we should be able to jump directly into full navigation mode. The filter is now in full navigation mode, which means that it's fully functioning and estimating position, velocity, and attitude. From here, we can set up a custom Center Connect dashboard for data visualization. First step is to set up streaming data channels for the sampling screen. So we're going to select sampling here. Uh, from here, we have the ability to select data from multiple sources, such as the IMU, estimation filter, and GNSS receivers. Uh, the simplest data setup is just to use the factory support channels, which are the critical data quantities required for post-processing data. So we're going to select apply support channels and apply which pre-configures all the data streams. Uh, then we're going to hit apply and start to begin streaming. Uh, from here, we can go set up a custom dashboard. First, go to the data tab. From here, we can start adding data display widgets. So we're going to add widgets. Uh, text chart is a good way to view, visualize some of the status data. So let's add in the fixed type from the two GNSS receivers as well as the current filter state. Um, from there, we'll add in some time series data for position and attitude. And finally, we'll just add one more for a 3D model with pitch roll and yaw involved. So you can see that Sensor Connect has the freedom and ability to set up your data visualization in any way that you want, uh, which can be a very powerful tool, depending on what your application is. So as a whole, that's the basic method for GQ7 initialization and setup. Uh, there's a lot more features and functionality that the GQ7 has to offer, but this is the basic uh, configuration process that you need uh, to get up and running.